Thulho is a fictional cosmic entity created by writer H.P. Lovecraft and first introduced in the short story The Call of Thulho, published in the American pulp magazine Weird Tales in 1928. Considered a great old one within the pantheon of Lovecraftian cosmic entities, the creature has since been featured in numerous popular culture references. Lovecraft depicts Thulhu as a gigantic entity worshipped by cultists. Thulhu's appearance is described as looking like an octopus, a dragon, and a caricature of human form. Its name was given to the Lovecraft-inspired universe where it and its fellow entities existed, the Thulhu Mythos. Etymology, Spelling and Pronunciation Though invented by Lovecraft in 1928, the name Thulhu is probably derived from the classic Greek word Thonic meaning subterranean, as apparently suggested by Lovecraft himself at the end of his 1923 tale The Rats in the Walls. Lovecraft transcribed the pronunciation of Thulhu as Klolhulo and said that the first syllable pronounced gutturally and very thickly. The U is about like that in full, and the first syllable is not unlike Klol in sound, hence the H represents the guttural thickness. An approximate IPA transcription, based on this description and the non-IPA signs, would be, with a voiceless velar lateral fricative. S. T. Joshi points out, however, that Lovecraft gave several differing pronunciations on different occasions. According to Lovecraft, this is merely the closest that the human vocal apparatus can come to reproducing the syllables of an alien language. Thulhu has also been spelled in many other ways, including Tulu, Kajalo, and Kuchalo. The name is often preceded by the epithet Great, Dead, or Dread. Long after Lovecraft's death, the spelling pronunciation Kaolo. Kthulhu became common. The role-playing game Call of Thulhu has used the pronunciations Kholhu or Tula, or more recently Kthololu. Description In the Call of Thulhu, H.P. Lovecraft describes a statue of Thulhu as a monster of vaguely anthropoid outline, but with an octopus-like head whose face was a mass of feelers, a scaly, rubbery-looking body, prodigious claws, on hind and four feet, and long, narrow wings behind. Thulhu has been described in appearance as resembling an octopus, a dragon, and a human caricature, hundreds of meters tall, with webbed human-looking arms and legs and a pair of rudimentary wings. On its back, Thulhu's head is depicted as similar to the entirety of a gigantic octopus, with an unknown number of tentacles surrounding its supposed mouth. Simply looking upon the creature drives the viewer insane, a trait shared by many of the great old ones and outer gods. In the Mythos Thulhu, in the Mythos, was probably born on the planet Viral in the 23rd Nebula. He was born from Nug and Yeb. At some later point he traveled to the green binary star system of Koth, where he mated with Idya, he was later worshipped by the shape-shifting star Spawn. Idya later spawned four children. In order these were Thanithua, Ithogtha, Zodomog and Thila. Thulhu and his family, as well as his star spawn traveled to Earth where Thulhu mated with his sister Kasigtha, who spawned Mktisa and Nokathulo. Thulhu and his spawn then built the great green stone city of Arlai on the great sunken continent of Mu before it was destroyed by Ithogtha. Around this time a great war started between the Shog Goths, Elder Things, Great Race of Yath, Flying Polyps, Miko and Thulhu and his children and Star Spawn. At the end of the war, they all decided to share the Earth. Publication History H.P. Lovecraft's initial short story, The Call of Thulhu, was published in Weird Tales in 1928 and established the character as a malevolent entity, hibernating within Arlai, an underwater city in the South Pacific. The imprisoned Thulhu is apparently the source of constant anxiety for mankind at a subconscious level, and also the subject of worship by a number of human religions located several places worldwide, including New Zealand, Greenland, Louisiana, and the Chinese mountains and other Lovecraftian monsters called Deep Ones and Migo. The short story asserts the premise that, while currently trapped, Thulhu will eventually return. 
His worshippers chant Ph and Glu M G L W Naf Thul Hu Arli Uganagalfhtan in his house at Arli, Dead Thul Hu waits dreaming. Lovecraft conceived a detailed genealogy for Thulhu, published as Letter 617 in Selected Letters and made the character a central figure in corresponding literature. The short story The Dunwich Horror 1928 refers to Thulhu, while The Whisperer in Darkness 1930 hints that one of his characters knows the creature's origins I learned whence Thulhu first came, and why half the great temporary stars of history had flared forth. The 1931 novella At the Mountains of Madness refers to the star spawn of Thulhu, who warred with another race called the Elder Things before the dawn of man. August Derleth, a correspondent of Lovecraft, used the creature's name to identify the system of lore employed by Lovecraft and his literary successors the Thulhu Mythos. In 1937, Derleth wrote the short story The Return of Haster, and proposed two groups of opposed cosmic entities. The old or ancient ones, the elder gods, of cosmic good, and those of cosmic evil, bearing many names, and themselves of different groups, as if associated with the elements and yet transcending. Them for there are the water beings, hidden in the depths, those of air that are the primal lurkers beyond time, those of earth. Horrible animate survivors of distant eons. 256. According to Derleth's scheme, Great Thulhu is one of the water elementals and was engaged in an age old arch rivalry with a designated air elemental, Haster the Unspeakable, described as Thulhu's half brother. 256, 266. Based on this framework, Derleth wrote a series of short stories published in Weird Tales 19441952 and collected as The Trail of Thulhu, depicting the struggle of a drug. Laban Shrewsbury and his associates against Thulhu and his minions. Derleth's interpretations have been criticized, among others, by Lovecraft enthusiast Michelle Howellebeck. Howellebeck's H.P. Lovecraft Against the World against Life 2005 decries Derleth for attempting to reshape Lovecraft's strictly amoral continuity into a stereotypical conflict between forces of objective good and evil. In John Glasby's A Shadow from the Eons, Thulhu is seen by the narrator roaming the riverbank near Dominic Waldron's castle, and roaring. The physical description of the god is totally different from that given as canon by all the other authors. The character's influence also extended into recreational literature games company TSR included an entire chapter on the Thulhu mythos including statistics for the character in the first printing of Dungeons and Dragons sourcebook Deities and Demigods 1980. TSR, however, were unaware that Arkham House, who asserted copyright on almost all Lovecraft literature, had already licensed the Thulhu property to the game company Chaosum. Although Chaosum stipulated that TSR could continue to use the material if each future edition featured a published credit to Chaosum, TSR refused and the material was removed from all subsequent editions. Thulhu was once again mentioned in the fifth edition of the Dungeons and Dragons Player's Handbook 2014, after Dagon, another of Lovecraft's fictional creations, featured prominently in the fourth edition of the game rules. Legacy See also Thulhu Mythos in popular culture Games In 2006 Bethesda Softworks together with Ubisoft and 2K Games published a game made by Head First Productions called Call of Thulhu Dark Corners of the Earth based on the works of Lovecraft. Thulhu himself does not appear, as the main antagonists of the game are the deep ones from the shadow over In's mouth and the eponymous sea god Dagon, but his presence is alluded to several times. And a statue depicting him appears in one of the temples that will negatively affect the S sanity. One of Thulhu's chosen, a star spawn of Thulhu, a hideous creature similar in appearance to the abomination himself, also appears as a late game enemy. Thulhu appears as a monster in many video games. Terraria makes a number of references to Thulhu in the form of the bosses, the Eye of Thulhu and Brain of Thulhu, as well as the Moon Lord, who is said to be Thulhu's brother. Also, it appears as main inspiration for the story of the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies Saga. 
Lovecraftian horror was a major influence in the 2015 game Bloodborne, with many of the enemies and concepts directly paralleling those found in the Thulhu mythos. In August 2016 Z-Man Games released an alternate version of their popular board game Pandemic. This new adaptation Pandemic Reign of Thulhu is set in the Thulhu mythos and explorers race to save the world before Thulhu returns. The game Darkest Dungeon is heavily inspired by Thulhu and other pieces of Lovecraftian lore. Including statues of tentacles or tentacle-faced creatures found within the cove levels. Politics Poster from the 2010 Polish presidential election. The caption translates as Choose the Greater Evil. Vote Thulhu. Thulhu has appeared as a parody candidate in several elections, including the 2010 Polish presidential election and the 2012-2016 U.S. presidential elections. The faux campaigns usually satirize voters who claim to vote for the lesser evil. Science The Californian spider species Pomothulhu, described by Gustavo Hormica in 1994, is named with reference to Thulhu. Two microorganisms that assist in the digestion of wood by termites have been named after Thulhu and Thulhu's daughter Thila Thulhu macrofasciculumc and Thila microfasciculumc, respectively. In 2015, an elongated, dark region along the equator of Pluto, initially referred to as the Whale, was proposed to be named Thulhu Regio, after Lovecraft's fictional deity, by the NASA team, responsible for the New Horizons mission.